Hello, everybody! We're back. Uh, I've just randomly skipped that stupid video again. One moment, let me unmute the others. And you're back! Say hey! No, I refuse to this time. <laughs> you, you don't own me! <laughs> I don't own you! It's not like I own you or anything! <laughs> oh god. Oh Jesus. Oh, it was only so long till we got an Archer reference in there. Only so long. Only, yeah. Right! Oh god, I've got the stupid chat open again every fucking time. Right, well, I need to hit that button. Uh, How dare you call chat stupid, Fimba? Chat is beautiful. No, 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 not, not the uh, chat. The Skype chat. Um, oh, uh -huh. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're catching up. Okay, so, um, we are back. We're going to cut back from the dinner, because we've spent a long time there, as the violence simmers down with uh, Midnight's assorted platitudes, uh, flirtations, and acting like she really can't be asked, which she might just not be asked. none of you are sure. Like, Tudor, you know she's your friend, and you're like, does she really not like me? <laughs> it's like, shit. Um, yeah, we'll cut back over to the guys in the car. And yeah, like, I think you two are, like, struggling your way back up this, um... This like thing with uh, you've you've harvested some of the equipment. Um, I'm just gonna say, sense has prevailed, so you've kept the power source and the heater in the vault for the people who have to stay there overnight. Um, and you're hauling like some of the plant stuff and some of the growing materials for that upstairs. Um, and yeah, you get to the top and like chuck this stuff down. And um, yeah, like I think. Uh, let me just check something very quickly. Lux. Why is Lux's character sheet not opening for me anymore? The heck's up with that? Because I'm beyond your control now. Oh, yeah, oh. Lux, you like. So you've got like Stein there. Going, oh, God. Um, and yeah, you kind of like stand up, stretch, turn around, and there's just this wolf staring at you. Like, kind of. If there's, there's you, there's the skid mark, and then there's. The uh, the wolf. Actually, what I can do is I can demonstrate some of the features of Roll20. Holy uh, shit, it's almost I'm... like you work for them. <laughs> I fucking wish. Shameless plug. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, so, let's hit. Uh, oh, I need to drag you guys over here. Doodly, doodly. Um, so we have that one, and then we have draw shape. Let's do you guys in green. Um... That's you two and the, the thing, and then, oh wait, no, I don't want to, uh, uh, this is the skid mark. This wolf is just kind of staring at you, okay. hungrily. Um, yeah. My amazing map skills, uh, cool. people in the chat. Look at this, look at this. It's got the little wolf, the skid mark, and these two. But yeah. So I assume you okay. have, like, some of your guns on you. Yeah, I have my, I have my nine. Yeah, I mean, the, the savvy head also, like, you don't leave without sufficient means of protection because the waste the icy wastes are a dangerous place yeah i mean it's easily concealed i mean i have the, the general parker over me at the moment i have the sleeve pistol and an array of knives hidden throughout my clothes yeah. <laughs> also isn't there the guy in the car still by the way uh yeah there's still one guy in the car and he's like staring out at you like is that Dremor? uh is no that is barker in the car a, does he not have a gun uh n i think maybe he does but he's sitting in the car. <laughs> so he's like, he's okay. like, just gonna be seeing him in the window going, no, 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 no. let's not do this. <laughs> he okay. doesn't want to get out and fight a wolf if he doesn't have to. He doesn't want to go full Liam Neeson. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> dive, and I presume I'm probably gonna have to go for doing some of the other fire, but I'm diving for my car to get in and shut the door. Okay. Uh, so you you make it like a dash for the car. Yeah. Um okay. Uh well you give me a cool roll while I ask uh Stein. Lux just like sprints for the uh the skid mark. Like leaving the equipment there. Do you like pull out your hunting rifle and like aim down sights? Do you like just stay very, very still? Oh that's not Ooh, good. That's not great. Um yeah, so before we find out the consequence of that, I want to find out what um, what Stein does. Are you just sprinting with her? Are you, like, edging your way back into the building to make a, a leg it for the vault? Are you holding your ground? Are you pulling out your gun? What are you doing? 
Are you just going to uh, straight like snap shoot it? I, I'm just going to calmly reach behind me and like un like bring around my hunting rifle. Yeah. Just slowly level it at the bull. Okay. Get it in the crosshairs. Okay, you, you like slowly draw your hunting rifle. I would make you roll, but the fail is such that I'm just gonna say um that yeah, this this wolf just like leaps at you as you like completely the smell of fear is about. And he, the the wolf leaps for you and he's this big like white wolf like leaps bundles on top of you, like you get a few like knocks and crap as it like and a cut through one one of your parker and take one harm. He's not actually trying to hurt you, and it just pins you to the ground and is like Panting directly into your face. So, uh, that, that's three o'clock, right? Uh, yes, yeah. that marks you up to three o'clock. Um, yeah. Okay. At this point, as you're like right face to face with it, by the way, <laughs> you notice it as like it doesn't have the big giant wolf eyes. It has like normal human green eyes. Before you have a chance to say anything, though, mm -hmm. Stein, you just you see this wolf bundle your buddy. Your, your your other the other other proclaimer, um, <laughs> like you're gonna shoot it? Yeah, I won't even hesitate. Okay. Um, I I'm aiming I'm aiming for a flank just to get it off Lux. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, you like it's it, Lux kind of ran, um, if I, oh, uh, so like, it's like move. So this, eh, this one, this one is Lux. The wolf is now on top of it. You're still here. This one doesn't exist. Um, so yeah, you you uh, go to shoot it. So that is... Is that going aggro or is that seizing by force? Well, roll plus hard. Um, we'll see how well you do. So what am I doing? Uh, so yeah, yeah, just flat hard. Um, so if I pull up the basic moves... Do something under fire. Going aggro on someone, roll plus hard. Um, Misses. What did you get? Uh, four. Four. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. dear. We are not doing well. <laughs> um, good rolls. Okay. Yeah. I need to get in my car. Do I so get a follow-up? No, so basically the, the consequences happen as a result of your roll. Um, so you, like, shoot, and this bullet, like, skims overhead, and the wolf, like, whirls around, panics, and then you see it lunge, and it seizes its jaws into Lux's shoulder. Uh, tick up another, actually, just another uh, one harm. It's actually quite shallow, I think. Wait, I get shot by. Uh... No, you don't get shot. The bullet misses, and the wolf like panics and bites you, um, right. and then turns to like you're like lying on the ground. It like it, it's not as serious as your screaming is making out. But you know, you were just bit by a wolf. You're panicking. Yeah. And um, yeah, then this wolf just turns and legs it. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Um. I yell, uh, get in the fucking car! Like, yeah. get in, punch, like, the guy who's in the car, and, like, sort of, like, get the fuck out! You get in! And, like, pointing to, um, Stein, and so we're yeah. gonna like, the wolf is, up that wolf. This, this wolf is, is, is running off, like, so, yeah, Lux is, is crammed in the car. Bark's like, why the fuck did you do that for, you crazy bitch? Why would you piss off a wolf? Um, I had assumed I was getting covering fire from the guy in the fucking car. Now get out! You don't deserve to be in this fucking like, car. Like holds Ow. up like a tiny Ow. nine millimeter. He's like, I don't even know how to reload this piece of shit. Yeah, think Ow. you get martial training. Um, yeah, I think you're gonna have to either like scare the shit out of him or beat him up to get him out of your car because um, <laughs> he ain't I, leaving uh, in a hurry. I would say I'm, I'm going aggro on him. Okay. Uh, yeah, so roll plus hard, you're in the car, so you get the benefits of your no-shit driver in the skid mark. So I believe you add the details of your move are in there. So that's... A nine. So you get a nine overall. Okay, um... What are his options on... Uh, oh, you aren't, like, nearby Stein, so you can roll to assist if you so desire. And if you do, the plus one takes it from a nine to a ten, if you are equally pissed at Barker. Um... If you want to do that. Okay, yeah, so uh, roll your HX with uh, Lux. So roll 2d6 plus whatever your HX with Lux is. Me? Yeah. That's how you assist people. Okay. You roll your history together. 
Like, he's, like, about to say something snappy and arse-ish back to, um... Uh, back to, to Lux, when, like, the door behind him opens, and you just hear, like, um, well, I don't know, Stein is just there with a hunting rifle. <laughs> just like, don't. Wait, how do I do this? Uh, slash R space 2d6 plus 1. Oh, I realized I forgot to do something. Oh, well. Doesn't matter too much. Okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, Barker turns around to you. I think you probably don't see this, Lux, but you see like anger in um in Barker's eyes and like the faintest tremor in his gun hand. That then he's like, "Fuck it, whatever." Where's and like stomps out, like goes back to find Tremor. Um, yeah, you two now have the cab to yourself. And he like barges past you, Stein. Then I, as soon as soon as like he's like in the car, I floor it and chase after this this, this wolf. <laughs> so you're okay. You're Before running. The door's even closed. It's like you're running you're down in. this wolf. Okay, yeah. yeah uh, act under fire in the car to the fire being catching up to this wolf. I guess uh, that's plus hard. I guess. Uh, no, that is plus no, cool. plus cool. Yeah, fire. so, so yeah. twenty plus two d six plus three. Yeah, I wish it was it was, it was plus d twenty. D twenty is plus three. Uh, yeah, okay, um, what are the downsides of your car? It's cramped. Oh, I can't open, um... It's called skid It's cramped, it's the, down it's the weakness. <laughs> okay, it's that's, cold. that's fine. Um, da -da 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 Um... Yeah, I think, okay, so the, we don't, nothing bad happens at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, if we were doing that kind of Dr. House thing, we, like, zoom in on, like, the bite mark, and yeah. we then, like, cut to, like, inside your bloodstream, and you see yeah. these abnormal things from the wolf mark, like, flowing through yeah. your system, and, like, they're leaking some kind of, like... Uh, basically, they're leaking kind of the same kind of aura that um, that Stein reads when he reads objects. It's, okay. like, has started to flow into you from this bite. Um, yeah. You 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 see the wolf. Um, you're like bearing down on top of it. Do you lean Can out I the window, start popping shots? Uh, I think I just drive into it. It's a fucking wolf. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Seize my force. Seize seize my force. Okay, that's with hard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that is with hard. <laughs> just gonna... maybe in it. I I don't think that's his intent. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, so there's a 9. Again, you may help if you so desire, uh, Stein, to put that up to a 10. I'm... But... I mean, okay, so let I'm me read you the... I'm going to observe on this one, I'm not going to assist. Yeah. Okay, so, uh... If I go to the basic moves... When you... Try to seize something by force... Be great today, I? Well, so, the thing you want to attempt to seize by force is the life of this wolf. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, just making sure I haven't said it. Um... So, on a 7 to 9, you choose 2. You uh, take definite hold of the life of the wolf, which I think is, like, that is pinning it under, like, the, the uh, one of the skis or, like, underneath yeah. the big tire tread. You suffer little harm, which you maybe suffer zero harm, so you can just negate anything that happens I when mean, you I guess bump like, over it, the wolf. I mean, to be fair, it's going to more, possibly it hurts the car. Yeah, that, that might be it. Uh, you inflict terrible harm, or you impress, dismay, or frighten your enemy. You get to choose 2. Bless you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> okay, so where can, so that's where can I find this actually? Uh, the basic moves handout uh, yes. in the handout section. All the basic moves and peripheral moves are there. Uh, if you're wondering, people of the audience, you occasionally see me pull up the MC moves. Those are specifically things I get to do to people. They are how I react to them failing roles. It also contains the kind of shit I'm supposed to do, such as intermittent fuckery. Still my favorite term in the book. <laughs> Simply by force, yeah. So I take definite hold of it. So for little harm, it's like terrible harm. Sometimes I choose two. Yeah, I think um, yeah. So take definite hold is your capacity to end this wolf's life at any point. So, uh, inflicting terrible harm is you kill the wolf. The other. So both, so both definite hold and the terrible harm are basically the same thing. Really. Kind of, kind of. I think like inflict. They're sort of an either or of like if you just want to straight up kill it, 
inflicting terrible harm is what you do. If you yeah. want to like look at it, because I mean, you just saw a wolf with human eyes. Yeah. If you're at all curious about that, you might want to pin it and like see what's up with it. Um, and you would have like it pinned under your car. Okay, yeah. So those yeah, are going to so be the I think I'm going to suffer little harm and take definite hold. Okay, yeah. So like you so hear the my car's <laughs> fine. It's like boom as you roll over it. Your car's okay, and there's a like, noise underneath as you like kind of a slightly tilted in the car as this wolf is just underneath yeah. the so shed. I, I, I turn to Stein and I'm just like, alright, this fucking thing bit me. Go out and fucking deal with it. Stay okay. in here. Like, whoa, Lux, you need to calm the shit down. Stay in the car. I'm gonna go take a look. <laughs> hey, calm the shit down. Have you seen the fucking bite marks? By this just point, I'm out of the car. Yeah, <laughs> spook it. Shut up, Lux. Shut up. Oh, yeah, okay. Before, so Before you've even finished, I've shut the door behind me. I'm out of the car. Okay, yeah. So, so you wander around and you see yeah, this, this like, well, slightly less pure white-furred wolf now, like, bleeding. Um, and, yeah, it kind of it looks up at you. And, yeah, you also see these, like, normal person green eyes. This, uh, this wolf is pinned under the car, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's pinned. It's, like, it's trying to escape, but, like, yeah, it, it looks I, pretty hurt. Can I use my thing speak on it? Mm, thing speak is kind of specifically for things. You could just generally open your brain to the psychic maelstrom about it, but yeah, yeah, less specific, I suppose. Um, you don't get the choice of specific questions. Yeah, thing speak is definably for things that are considered objects. If uh, if you consider creatures objects, we have to go into like the kind of psych. You kind of have to have justified that for the fiction beforehand of like you don't consider people any more important than stuff. Yeah, the... that kind of goes into the savvy head nature, isn't it? Uh, not quite. Like, the savvy head builds stuff for people. They feel more at home around machines and stuff. But they're still, they have a clear moral divide between, like, Given machinery my... and like, people. Given my shitty relationships with everyone stat wise. I mean, that's just because you're socially awkward. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I think this is so, just uh, opening your brain to the psychic maelstrom. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'm, I'm yeah. I don't think you can quite justify that, um... That one. Why is the pin it button just hovering in the middle of my screen? Uh, let's move back to that. So yeah, just roll plus weird. Um, so next to weird. yeah, just weird. Let's see what you get. Uh, oh, I want to get that one too. Boom. Okay. Finally, rolling well. Uh, Someone can. Act. Everyone can roll now. Yeah. So. <laughs> This is the move where things start to get funky. Also, if you've rolled a highlighted stat, remember to mark experience every time you do. Um, oh, so I get some experience for that. Yeah, so uh, also Midnight gains 1 XP for having rolled her hot earlier. I don't think uh, the Hocus has yet had a chance to roll his um his weird. Is that on my uh, character sheet? Yeah, the, underneath the stats, there's like, under experience, there's five little check boxes. Every time you roll a highlighted stat, mark one check. There's three uh, already. Oh, uncheck those three. Those three shouldn't be checked. So I need one checked, yeah? Yeah, you just have one checked. Uh, okay, so... Yes, when you open your brain to the world's psychic maelstrom, roll plus weird. On a hit, the MC will tell you something new and interesting about the current situation and might ask you a question or two. Answer them. On 10+, plus, the MC will give you a good detail. On a 79, you get an impression. Um, if you already know everything there is to know, the MC will tell you that. So, yeah, what are you... What are, what are you looking for about this wolf? Like, as you... I peer I, into the psychic maelstrom for it. I kind of just want to touch its mind and see what's up, because I, I recognize that this, there's something more than just an animal I'm looking at. Okay. There's something almost, like, intelligent. Yeah. Okay, so um, so tell me, what's what's it like when when Stein enters the psychic maelstrom? When you travel beyond your body into the weird... Do we just get the Twilight Zone music playing? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I think... Everything goes a little bit fuzzy, and there's, like, a static sound everywhere, including, mm -hmm. like, I can hear, see, feel static. Mm -hmm. But I can also feel, like, vibes. Yeah, I you get, like, kind of like, synesthesia, almost, of, like, yeah. you feel static noise, and you hear the, like, the cold or some shit. That's um, it. So there's yeah. stuff I hear over the static that's clear. And then, like, it all kind of coalesces into a picture or an image for you. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's weird, like, yeah, sensory overload state. Um, okay, yeah, so I think you see, um, you're like, the mind of the wolf, it's, yeah, you kind of, you just, like, graze it, and you get this image of, like, well, overwhelming at the moment is fear, 
Um, but then you kind of push in a little deeper, and you get yeah. There's there's more to it. You like you um you sense like you get images of like stainless steel rooms, like laboratories, like way cleaner than your workshop, with an evidently more medical purpose. You get like the blurry image of some guy, and then like you remember there's like you get for this long time where like you can't see anything, but you're able to like hear. What is evidently human speech that your source material can't understand. Um, and then, like, as that's happening, you feel, like, the thing getting smarter. It's like, you can feel it more intelligent, stuff like that. And, um, yeah, and then it kind of zooms out, and you just get an image of this place that you just now, you can you just know it. Um, it's called... Uh, no, nah, fuck it. This place, this place, yeah. You just get, like, a zoom out, and you just see, like, this door with a, a kind of metal made sign it just has winter mute on the door and then like the kind of connection breaks and then you see in front of you the wolf like expires bleeding heavily from like a wound it got you just get this image of this place winter mute uh like, like some kind of old laboratory or something well the laboratory underneath an old building that looks relatively cleared out to be more specific yeah that's evidently where this wolf came from and whatever happened to give it these eyes happened okay so i i take a minute to just take in what i've seen and what yeah about. yeah like you're also, you're I'm taking a minute i sort of lower down the window and just go uh, is it fucking dead yet <laughs> okay at this point i stand up mm. i just look at lux and i pull yeah. out a cigarette and i come back to the, the start i come back to the car and get in that, that wolf's not going anywhere do you if I say Wintermute, does that mean anything? I presume that doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, not really. Like, you maybe heard someone say it once in a bar or something. Fair. If you went back to town, you might someone may know something about it. Like, uh, uh, fucking rings a bell, but everywhere's called fucking Winter something around here. People are unimaginative. Like... It's true. <laughs> well, we, we, need to get, we, we need to start moving that stuff back to the garage. Yeah. Um, so we best get a move on. Cool. We get interrupted again. Yeah. I need to find. Can you patch your shit up. I know you're only good with metal, but can you can you do fucking skin? Cause this shit. This is uh. This is at six harm. You will slowly heal over time. It's like you can go back and like find like the, the town has a doctor. Cool. Um. Alright. They're no okay. they're no angel, but there is a doctor. Cool. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Alright. Let's go out to the town. I'll get my big shit out. Get the McQuay mobile. And cool. Let's get yeah. rolling. You guys spend the rest of the night moving stuff. Like Dremor yeah. and um, Barker are like really pissed about having to spend a night hiding in a fucking vault in the middle of this horrible place. But yeah, you come back drenched in blood and stuff, and they're not willing to argue. Um, cool. I, I, I get I get patched up. <laughs> and li like I get some bandages put on whilst when I'm back in town. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, you can kind of bandage it yourself if you want to remove the harm immediately. It will cost you money. Like, that's, extent that's like, requires a few drugs and stuff like, like, just proper sutures and stuff like that. If it's just, like, tighten it so you don't lose any blood, you can just do that yeah. yourself. Uh, you know enough about field dressing. Yeah. Right. We cut back to, um, the other two as they're, well, Tudor is about to leave to go forth and, um... To the bar. Yeah, to, the, to this bar where the, uh... The welders are, are drinking, to to speak the good word. Uh, midnight. What are you doing? Are you spending the rest of the evening with Cecil, um, doing what it is you do, or are you? Uh, one of you cited midnight. Uh, midnight should come see how the court functions. And exactly. Debate. Seeing as how I've now been drafted unwillingly onto the court, you know, I I, I should probably go and see what Tudor's doing. With all the townsfolk, just to get a bit of an insight. So. Um, yeah, C Cecil kind of nods and goes, um, "Take, take one of the boys. Take, um, take Rock here with you." He indicates one of the two heavy guys with a shotgun, like strapped to his like side, just to, just in case. It's, you're going into a, a slightly rougher part of of the road. Um, yeah, like, she so kind of um, the guy like Rock like straightens up, like cracks his knuckles, and like slides him like be alright midnight totally like not. stares at Greg and like winks him and goes oh, I'll keep you safe and puts an arm over or oh, goes to put an arm over you what do you do I 
kind of want to punch him in the face a little bit. <laughs> Do it. That's, Do it. That's an entirely legitimate course of action. Uh, you can just like, you can literally say like, you can. There's so there's the the move going aggro, which you could say, if you touch me with that hand, you'll lose it. Which does mean if he does touch you with that hand, you will inflict violence upon him. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so you you threaten him like what do, what do you, what exactly do you say to him as he like goes to put his arm over you, attempting to out macho, uh, Greg as he does so. What do, what do, what do, what is it exactly you say? I'm curious. You're a strong, independent woman. You don't need no man. <laughs> I turn around and be like, what was what was his name? Uh, that guy's name is Rourke. Rourke. I'd be like, look, Rourke. I don't particularly want you coming along with me, but okay, I definitely don't want to see you. I don't want to hear you. If you f if you try and fucking touch me, you will live to regret it. So just oh, put well. that out there. Okay, so that is definitely if he does touch you at this point, you're going to hurt him. Yes. Okay, roll plus hard. Uh, let's see how well this goes for you. Do that. So how do I do that? So on your character sheet, on the stat line, uh, there is the hard button. Underneath that, there is going aggro slash seize by force and the little dice button. So yep. just just hit roll. Will I change overlays again? Let's see how terrifying midnight is. Cool. Succeeds partially. He. Uh, once again, Shooter, you are in a position to aid with this if you so desire. No, oh, I'm good. Oh, sorry, I rolled twice. No, that's fine, we'll take the nine. Um, but uh, for just to, so you understand, aiding gives plus one, uh, and can be done after the fact. Interfering gives plus two, and it can be done. Minus two, and can be done, done after the fact. Um, so aiding when a person has just rolled a nine pushes them up to a ten and a full success. Uh, right. um, just so we're is aware. Is there a negative impact of me failing to help? Yes, you can. Ex if you f uh, if you roll a ten plus, you give the help and nothing happens to you. On a seven to nine, you give the help but you expose yourself to some element of the danger. So, if Rourke does something drastic, it might go badly for you too. If there's no way for it really to go badly for you, it doesn't. Uh, on like a failure, like I don't, th I think you don't help, and bad shit happens to you. Um, it would look kind of out of, out of place me helping, okay, so I'll that's just fine. Kind of sit and watch. Oh uh, yeah, so when you go aggro on someone, on seven to nine, they have to choose one. They get the hell out of the way, barricade themselves securely in, do something they think you want, back off calmly, as you can see. Tell them what you want to hear. I'll tell them what you want to know, what you want to hear. Force your hand and suck it up. I think yeah, Rourke like holds it for just a moment. And then literally, you see him very, like, he, like, Greg, like, looks at him with, like, this contempt. Like, eh, fuck you. Um, and he very, like, just, just, it just puts his hand on your shoulder, like, I don't think Cecil would like your toe, miss. At which point, I presume, you slap him? Or, I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, he, he takes that, like, slap to the face. Like, spits out the small wad of blood. Which goes... All right. The mightiest of fast snaps. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> She's actually quite scary. <laughs> um, I mean, he, he cuts himself like his tooth on his like lip or something inside of his lip. Just spits out a little bit of blood and just kind of goes, "All right, well, I guess I'll see you in the bar." And he like walks a little bit ahead, but he's still going because he doesn't give a fuck. What do you think? And Cecil goes, "Try not to wind up the help too much, dear." See you later. And he turns around and walks back inside, followed by Sheriff and the other heavy and the butler. So, we head to the bar. Um, so is this like the bar for my people or the bar for the wellers? Uh, I think this might bars? be like, there's a few, I think this place is big enough to support like a lot of people and a few pubs. So I don't think it's actually the bar for the welders or your people. It's like the bar kind of in the shittier part of town where people who work with their hands and don't exploit other people live. Um, yeah, it's called the Iron Spigot. Yeah. Because they're well- Actually <laughs> naming things. I know, so right? proud of you, Evan. On a roll, like... don't, don't, don't jinx it. Because they're welders. Yeah, you walk in and, uh, Greg, like, goes, like, as you straight in, Greg, like, sticks his hands with the air and, like, booms, and, like, you forgot how loud he can get. Because he <laughs> yells over machinery and says, Our Lord! His Majesty! Tudor has graced us this evening with his presence. It's like, and he like 
steals a pint glass. Um, like I think you know, he picks up like a bunch of drinks from a table, and, like thrusts a glass into each of your hands, or like a mug, uh, possibly even a stein, um, <laughs> and goes hey. a toast to His Majesty's health and the newest member of our court, Madame Midnight. And like everyone in the bar's like, yeah. Um, yeah, and you see, you see Rourke, like, in the corner, like, having cleared out a small area, just, like, lift his cup in your direction. Um, and then, like, not breaking, uh, like, if ever you look back at him midnight, he's literally staring, probably directly at your tits. Um, <laughs> just at all points in time. Okay. And I think there's probably even a, a time where you catch him, and he looks you in the eye, and just looks back at your tits. <laughs> he is decidedly not a pleasant man. Um, yeah, so, uh, how are you guys treating this evening? Like, Greg kind of is, is hustling you around, like, getting you to talk to everybody. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm meeting and greeting, aren't I? Yeah, Just there's, reason. like, um, there's not really a move to roll here, so I won't make you, but yeah. Um, a few people... So, do you, like, have you charted any miraculous powers, like, as His Majesty? Like, have you done things that other people, like, since you gained the power of augury, have you done something insane? Or, like, are there minor miracles? And also, not even, stuff you haven't actually done, but minor miracles attributed to Tudor. Um, I've probably used augury to kind of predict when like shipments would arrive and like minor things just yeah, try like, and maximize oh, the, profits. Yeah, you, you called like that the shipment would be delayed by two days because and like and you see a great hulking beast covered in snow and then it's like, oh yeah, a fucking bear rammed us on the road. Jeez, it was terrifying. Um Okay. Um okay and the question for midnight Have you ever been out on one of these like uh evenings with the people with Tudor? Or do you stick to kind of high society in Cecil's not, Road? Not with Tudor. And um, I'm not going to lie, um, I'm not really enjoying it. I just kind of want to go and sit uh, in a corner by myself I think... and just, like a picture of sass. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, Greg, after he kind of has Tudor talking to people, will, like, let you politely excuse yourself and um, get you a seat. Because he knows that you're in the court, but your affiliation was a little bit secret as well. He just kept his mouth shut. So he kind of, he'll, like, clear a little table for you. He like, clip some, uh, like, people who are, like, still, like, six foot tall. It's just, he's, like, six foot three. And he clips a couple of them in he's like, fuck off, this is Matt, this is Madam Midnight, Madam Midnight's table. And he, like, puts down what is probably the nicest drink here, and it's basically potato vodka, um, <laughs> just in front of you, and it's like... Don't dis potato vodka, all Yeah. Right? It has some serious yeah. shit. Yeah, and he, um, yeah, he'll, like, stay and chat with you if you seem to want to chat with him, and he'll just... If not, he'll wander around with um with Tudor. Yeah, but are you just observing the situation quietly, and, or are you just like fuck it, I'm gonna get wasted? <laughs> it's kind of like yeah, fuck it. I don't. As as far as anyone else is aware, I don't want to be here, so I'm just gonna fucking act like you don't want to be here. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit in a corner hmm. by myself and just drink a lot. Yeah, does this conceal any like? Are you are you gonna like be reading the situation at the corner? Like, do you want to know? About oh, yeah, I'll okay. be I'll be making it seem like I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, you you, like you affect the but air I'll of disinterest. I'll actually be paying a very high amount of attention to what Tudor is doing and how he's interacting with people, so I can just turn around and be like, "What the fuck are you doing? No one okay. to kill you." So, question then: Are you reading the situation, or are you reading Tudor? I'm reading the situation. Okay, in which case, um, so yeah, roll plus sharp to find out what that's going to be. Uh, and yeah, I think the first thing you notice is that Tudor is a lot better at this than he is in like, kind of, you've had a few drink, late night drinking sessions and conversations with him, but he's a lot better at like, this kind of general talking to the crowd, acting like this benevolent like, ruler and wise man than he is in like, his kind of slightly more stuttering thing when he's talking amongst equals like he was with Cecil. Like, there he's not very good. Here he's like, he's got a good word for everyone, he remembers everyone's name, he's the perfect middle manager. Um... <laughs> Okay, you rolled uh, good enough. So if you go to the basic moves handout, uh, there is the uh, when you read a charge situation, the top of the middle column, uh, and then there's a list of questions. You can ask up to three of those, but you have to ask them now. I can't even read that. Um, you can zoom it in if you click on the image. Yeah. 
um, for the rest of people. How, how, how many of these can I ask? You can ask three. And you don't have to ask three, but yeah. Okay. Um, what should I be on the lookout for? Rourke. He's getting very drunk and he's getting even more leery. Don't walk home alone. Um, or, you know, have your friend who can turn this entire bar onto him in seconds tear apart. Okay. Um, who's in control here? Ho uh, Tudor. Tudor. Greg was when he walked in. Tudor is now. Um, I mean that that could change on the by the the whim of the dice, but yeah. For now, Tudor's at the moment, everyone wants to talk to Tudor. Tudor is the guy at the but that, when that party happens where there's like one person invites a bunch of groups, different groups of friends, and all of them want that guy to be yeah. with them. Um, yeah, that's what Tudor is in this place. Okay, um, I don't think I need to ask a third question. Okay, so I'm good. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so Tudor, yeah. Uh, you're wandering around, you're chatting. Uh, if you have sharp highlighted, don't forget to mark XP. I don't remember what you have highlighted. Yeah, so Tudor, you're walking around. Um, yeah, like, are you attempting to get anything out of this? Because people, when people come to you with their problems and like, bless my child, oh, noble king, or whatever. Um, unless, like, are you trying to get something out of this? Are you attempting to, for instance, speak truth to the mob? Uh, mob, I'm not addressing a mob, am I? I'm well, I mean, around. you've got this, like, rowdy... Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, God, the four-hour limit. Um, one second, I'm just going to... Actually, everyone <laughs> yeah, just switch back that. on your cameras. Never reached that before, that's amazing. Just switch back on your cameras quickly. It might just work easily. Uh, or maybe I have to do the recall. We've reached our four-hour limit. Yeah, it's yeah. a four-hour limit, except you can immediately switch the cameras back on. Oh, my God, how did we Why do that? Is... Why are they all darkened? The hell? Um... It's yes, trying to trick you into going to That is weird. Yeah, but you can literally hang up, redo it, and it will work perfectly. Um, yeah. But yeah, you mean... There, there's, there's is a rowdy group of very large men, like, who all are paying attention to you. There's, there is certainly potential to form a mob here. If that's what you want to do. I don't know how much you... Do you want to agitate the situation, or do you just kind of... This whole thing's um, because they want better living situations. Oh, they're, they're just unhappy with their lot in life, but then again, so is almost everyone in the apocalypse. Um, it's the apocalypse. Uh, and kind of, it's not that Tudor makes it actually improves their life standards. It's that Tudor makes them feel better about having nothing. Because he insists that it's just the way of the world that the commoners should farm and the king should be in command. That's... It's, he's just kind of, and this is just the way life is, and it's great. Here's all these reasons why. But they forget that when he's not around. Oh, and there's the light okay, again. Yep. Um, I, at least that's my understanding of your... The Pax yeah. Britannia. Yeah, feudal structure and all that. Yeah, you're... you're... So, not, sorry, Joe is essentially being David Cameron. No, he's he's being... He's being Queen Elizabeth the <laughs> First. Like, he is the first king's when it was like totally normal for one man to own everything and then like a bunch of other men to control some of that for him and then a bunch of other people to be owned <laughs> just yeah so yeah like Tudor what are you what are you doing as you wander around are you just listening to people letting the crowd wash over you are you attempting to like push some ideas into them onto them into them onto them yeah. well Greg Greg was talking about how agitated everyone so I'm just kind of going round it's the the general assurances that a prophet peddles in of promising a better future. Okay. Just kind of being like, yeah, d don't worry, we'll get there. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, that yeah, you you eventually get to like one table where like this guy is kind of he's sitting looking worried. He kind of approaches and he goes out. Oh, Your Majesty, I've been I've been seeing some disturbing things when I sleep at night, and I know you're. You you have some understanding of these kinds of things. I was oh, this is ridiculous. Um, uh, just he kind of looks a bit nervous, but I mean, if you attempt to draw it, out, if you just go, kind of, oh, you're fine, buddy. I assume you draw it out of him with a little bit of the the kind of polite nudges. Yeah, I, yeah. He goes kind of encourage I, him to continue his story. When I go to sleep at night, I see this vision of I walk in my door and. 
my family are dead, like murdered horrifically, and then I'm standing there and I should feel horrified, but I feel overjoyed. And then I look at my hands and they're covered in blood and I'm holding a knife and then I wake up screaming. I haven't slept more than three hours in a row in a week, sir. Can you help me at all? This is the kind of thing what opens one's brain to the psychic maelstrom for, by the way. Yeah. Unless you think that. he's talking out of his ass and you roll sharp. No, I, I, I believe it's his, his intentions are. Okay. Open. Do I just open my mind, or do I? Yeah. Well, you. So you kind of. You. What? Where do you want the questions to go? Um, what do you want to ask of him? I ask him is like, do you do you think someone has caused this? Do you think it's a vision of your future, hmm. a vision of your past? Is is there anything that you recognise? Okay. Like, I think a probing question like that. He's like, it's it's my house. Uh never lost i've never killed my wife before that's pretty new uh yeah i think th this is more like a as you direct your like it's where you direct your inquiry into the maelstrom it's like where are you where are you what what lines are you pushing at to um try and ask this um i just need to know just so i ha i know what i'm saying when i tell you your thing the, probably just look into the the cause of this yeah you want to know the source of the dreams yeah. Okay. So uh, roll weird? Yes, roll weird. Now in my life, this is going to be like a five. It's not too bad. Uh, okay, eight. So you get a vague impression. Yeah, okay. So you, um, you like, put your hands, like, how, how, what's the prophet stance of Tudor? Like, does he, like, put his hands on either side of his, his, his child? It's like, I will heal you, child. Or does he just kind of, like, stand there looking very regal? Like, almost does the wave just very slowly and just, like, opens his his brain. Like, I'm just curious of the physicality. Like, he kind of goes down on one knee like a knight. Right. And just kind of clasps his hands together and f puts his forehead on them and just focuses really hard. Okay. Um, okay, interesting. Almost in prayer. Yeah, and then how does Tudor... What, what does it look like when Tudor accesses the maelstrom? Um, he gains a faint red and gold aura. Okay, so you, you is this like overlaid on your normal vision of just like this, this reddish and gold aura appears? Just kind of a faint, faint mm. overlay. Okay. As in a, in a slight humming noise. All right. I was half expecting you to like say like he sees like a vision of a carpet unfolding towards a throne in front of him, and when he sits on it, he attains the knowledge he's looking for, um, <laughs> or something equally dumb. Oh wait, what I see or what I look like? This is what you see. This is this is no. It's um when you open your brain second maelstrom, it's not so much physical I, I stuff you were happens. Asking what I look like to other. Yeah, people. this is this is more like what so this is in where you go. Yeah, like. Uh, in my head, it's 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 the mind palace thing from Sherlock. Except yours might literally be you arrive at a psychic palace no, that looks a, awfully uh... Buckingham esque. <laughs> there you go. It's yeah, it's a palace with a long red carpet mm. with people with like shadowy figures on all the balconies, just saying things okay. as I walk towards the throne and sit down. And just mm. pick out the, the the voices that are the loudest are what you hear. Okay, so as occasionally like sometimes you walk into like different rooms to find certain things yeah. and stuff like this. This palace is is the place that holds your like psychic knowledge. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so you're in your kind of throne room, and yeah, like I think it's, it's what happens is um one of the like suits of armor that's like in your throne room like clanks forward, like turns to face the um the throne like puts down his sword in front of you and lifts off his helmet and it's the guy but as he lifts off his helmet you see like kind of you focus and you see there's like, this dark like aura like attached to the top of his head and like as you follow it you can see it like linking up to one of the other suits of armor um and as you focus it you see it's got like this aura kind of coating it and slowly similar like kind of dark tendrils are peeling away from the suit towards other things like into the invading your palace as it were Okay. Um, yeah. Then, like, the vision just, like, as it, almost as if it, like, it notices you noticing it, the aura, like, dissipates, and your palace kind of, like, fades away as it, it kind of goes, there is nothing left for you to learn here. 
Okay. Ugh. So yeah, that's it's going to be what is yeah. There's this vague impression of like something is affecting your follower. Okay, so I I come out of the trance. I stand up. Yes. Uh, this by the way, let's let's give a name to this guy while I'm here. So this young man's name is. I will call him. <laughs> I could that would be funny. Nah. Do it. Do oh, it. Oh no, no. Do His it. name is East Harrow. Okay. He's <laughs> just named East Harrow. I will tell him that some malign force is affecting him. Okay. And we will deal it. Deal with it. I then turn to the pub. Uh huh. And. Are we gonna speak some truth? <laughs> Dropping mad truth bombs. I want. I want. Gather people to perform some augury. Okay. But I need to do a roll to do that, and then roll for that. I think these are kind of your followers. Like your cult is of indistinguishable size. So like Greg is there. Like you've got at least like two legitimate followers in this room, and a bunch of people who are invested in what you're saying. Yeah. So I think yeah, you can you can you can pull off augury. Let's see how well this goes. What is how does augury look like? You've gone from like have you have you fling open the doors of your palace and allow the crowd in to like the chapel area where you preach, or is it what what it is, exactly is this? We um essentially stroll in uh -huh. or march in. Okay, with a group towards a stone tower off to the side yeah. where the stole furnishings is a large wooden table surrounded by chairs. A large round wooden table round any chance? Wooden table. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, so like yeah, you kind of turn and like go um, I don't know, pray with me, and like you yell to this bar and like it was yeah. almost like a, there's a ritual to this I would assume and they like kneel as if they were about to be knighted and like pray and like yeah. I kneel in the centre of a circle while yeah. everyone else kneels around. Yeah, I think midnight uh, you almost, like, this is, like, the few things I think that you date, as a follower, you take seriously. It's like, this is him doing his shit. Um, so, you are involved in this, unless you very much choose not to be. I will assume you are, because you believe on some level in him. Are you very specifically choosing not to be, or are we going by your kind of starting alignments to assume you are? Yeah. yeah. So, the only person in this room not joining in is Rourke. Um... Well, let's just say for, like, for ease that you uh, f look like you're, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I guess I'll just go along with everyone else for Rourke's supervision. Okay, so augury. That's so, a weird roll, right? Yeah, it is a weird roll, but you have to choose one first. So I, I presume what's going here is you are isolating and protecting a personal thing from the world psychic maelstrom. Are you choosing to protect East Harrow, or are you, like trying to do something, like, reaching through the world psychic maelstrom to something or someone connected to it? Like, are you trying to find the source, or are you trying to protect uh, East Harrow? Or are you trying to do something else entirely? They're, these are in the peripheral moves. I'm going to... Well, I mean, there's also... You could isolate and contain a fragment of this black, strange black mist that you can see. I'm going to isolate and protect East Harrow. Okay. Yeah, um, okay, so yeah, roll, roll weird. Uh, let's see how this plays out. What did you get? A nine. Eight. That's, that's okay. I don't know, nine. Sorry, I was yeah, scrolling. Nine. Okay. She um do an aid roll, couldn't she? Yes, midnight. From the back of this room, you, you feel like, not quite a failing, but a slight falter in, um, in Tudor's step. His, like, self-confidence has been knocked a bit by being threatened by a bunch of armed men. And you can choose to prop him up, if you so desire. Uh, you realise that will require you to dip into your psychic reserves a tad, but it's rolling plus HX, not plus weird. But you'll have to, like, do more than just kind of be there. You'll have to, like, actively lend him some of your real estate in your brain. Yeah, okay. Okay, roll your HX with Tudor. How do I do that? Uh, so, what, what's your HX with Tudor? Uh, plus one. Okay, so type slash r space 2d6 plus 1. Plus the symbol. Seven. Okay. 
Cool, 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 cool. Uh, let me just check this. Um... Oh, I don't have the aid uh, interfere move on here. Do they? Okay. Well, we'll deal with this thing first. Of like, yeah, this like, there's this prayer thing. Like, I think the the table like opens to Ted somehow, and like East Harrow strides forward in this psychic projection, and you stride forward from the other side. You lay your hands on the either side of his head, and this armor that's kind of like cracking and old and rusted slowly rebuilds itself around him. And, like it becomes shiny and new and like inlaid with like gold and such, and looks amazing in this like strange alternate universe where the sun shines outside and. It's all regal. And I think in here, Tudor's also, he's taller, he's more handsome, he's younger. Um, it, it's its what he sees in the mirror, I think. Um, it's not necessarily that he's, like, unattractive. It's just that his vision of himself is of something great. Whereas yeah. he may just be good. Um, and, yeah, he lays his hands, and, like, this armor rebuilds itself around East Harrow. And, um... Like you can, all of you see like this like black aura like slowly being chased away as the steel like creeps up around him, um, and then yeah, that dissipates. The tiny like midnight, you just you probably don't see this, but the tiniest bit of it as it's like flying out of the room, it's like there's kind of this glob of it, and the glob turns and spits this tiniest bit that just hits the back of your neck, and like clings there. Um, also. I need you to make two more decisions for me. Uh, so you have to choose two of this will persist for a while without you actively maintaining it. It reaches deep into the world's psychic maelstrom. It reaches broadly throughout the world's psychic maelstrom. Or it's stable and contained, no bleeding. It's stable and contained. Okay. Probably permanent as well then. Like You don't need it to particularly reach deeply or broadly. And it'll persist for a while. So. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah, so it's not, not going to be any, like, people getting, like, actively, like, pushed away from him by the, uh, like, it's going, well, you want no mental uh, We thought you said no physical interference. I'm sorry, we flattened <laughs> his house. Um, yeah, okay. This, like, vision ends and you all return to this bar. And, like, Tudor just kind of goes, I don't know, what, do you say anything as this, like, mass hallucination ends? Um, I say that your trouble should be over. And thank you my friends for your aid cool there's a lot of yeah like hush like whisperings and such and then everyone just back and like raw because like looking you all like what the fuck is wrong with you people swig <laughs> um cool we will end the session here tonight there's one piece of bookkeeping we need to do before we go so we're gonna whip around the table and this one's gonna be pretty easy this time but everyone needs to pick a person that knows them better or worse not neutral so give them plus one or minus one HX with them. So we'll start. This is going to be pretty easy because you were paired off. Uh, we'll start with Lux. Uh, who knows you better, Lux, or knows you worse? Well, I think. Uh, I guess. I guess. Uh... <laughs> okay. Don't tell me who. Tell me how. How does he um... know you better or worse? Plus one X reason or minus one X reason? Yes. Yeah, so. I totally haven't got names. Uh, uh, Stein. Uh, Stein. 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 Stein knows me um, better because they've they've seen that like in a moment of conflict, I go to my car. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Like that's like yeah. ignore everything else. Get to car. Once I get to car, I'll deal with something else. But fair. I, I'm trying to remember if this gives you plus one with him or whether it gives him plus one with you. I think that probably gives him plus one with me. Uh, Where are the balls is it? Um, session end. There are session choose character who knows you better than they used to. Okay, yes. So Stein, add plus one to whatever number of your H whatever HX you have with Lux. And Stein, why does um, Lux know you better or worse? Um, it's purely a time thing. I mean, the amount of time we've spent um, yeah. between places uh, assisting each other on various errands. Yeah. I think Lux is just used to the way I am, the way I behave, mm. and like why yeah, you, you, you no like, shot to defend her, like you immediately snapped your weapon to defend her, so there's that. So yeah, Lux gets plus one with uh, Stein. Note if these tick up to plus four. Uh, and then 
Midnight and Tudor. Why do you two know each other better or worse? We'll start with Midnight. Why, what does Tudor know about you? Uh, why does he understand you better or worse than he did at, before well, we started? Tudor is now aware of the fact that I am a little bit more involved in the whole Tudor court thing and mm. where I stand with Cecil in it. Yeah. Um, kind of in on it as well, so... Yeah. Then we give that of like, he, he understands your relationship with Cecil a little better. Yeah. And yeah, I think maybe has a better idea of your like ability to speak soothing platitudes, as it were. Yeah. Um, and get what you want that way. So yes, Tudor, mark plus one with midnight. I believe that takes you to plus four, correct? Yep. So set that to plus one and mark an experience. So you know, Tudor now doesn't get to decide everyone's highlighted stat at the beginning of the next session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, so Tudor, what does does a uh, Midnight, no, you better or worse? Yeah, she saw me hobnobbing with the big folks and yeah, she, she knows down with, the, with the normal folks, and we like shared saw the, the whole the difference which, in she between. helped me in the psychic maelstrom. Yeah, as well. I think, yeah, she may, yeah. maybe probably probably learn more about you and like the fact that like she's only seen you be confident around your your court, unless she hadn't seen you in a one on one with a man who's technically an equal, and yeah. was like kind of expecting you to be the same, this grand preacher, and you're a bit more like this reasonable guy who tries to talk like a normal person. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, Midnight Mark plus one HX with from what you currently have with uh, Tudor. Yes. Right. It is basically one o'clock. We should really wrap up. So, let's whip around and everyone say, like, give a little closing message to the peoples. The glorious peoples. Anything you'd like to shout out that you do if you have a Twitter, if you care. Whatever. Uh, let us start with Jamie. Hi. Uh, you guys in the chat, you're great, the ones that are surviving, even the guys that have gone already, because, you know, four hours, buzz, no matter how great we are, you know, it's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, big thanks to you guys. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't have you guys. Well, we probably would. <laughs> it just would be less fun. We wouldn't but, have... Yeah, thanks for your support, and really hope to see you guys in the future. Uh, it's been really fun. Cool. Johnny? Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah it's, again, shout out to the chat. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to sh accidentally time out you guys for 10 minutes this time. It was <laughs> lovely. Um, that was fun. That you can follow me on Twitter <laughs> at Catonia6. Um, oh my god. I will probably never tweet, but you can follow me anyway and help my ego. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, see you next time. Cool. Also, like, favorite, and subscribe. To the YouTube video that I made for the hype track. Because <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> subscribe to that channel that is no longer updated. Yes. Seems reasonable. So, no, subscribe to just that video. Okay. Seems re seems seems legit. Uh, Chip. Talk okay, to the so this has been my first experience with like anything to do with this, and it's been pretty damn awesome. Like it's really like hyped me up for like future experiences with it so it's pretty awesome and to everyone who was watching it like how the fuck did you enjoy like four hours of this shit <laughs> thank you for doing it because it was really awesome so one yeah, more I for the have, dice gods i don't have any twitter well i do have twitter but it, i never use it um if you want to add me on facebook it's sharing and reynolds because i don't really give a shit so, yeah. fair enough you're gonna this is one day this will get popular someone will watch this episode back <laughs> One day in the future, when I'm big, someone will watch my backlog, and then you'll just get, like, a hundred invites in a day. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. will Why not? Laugh. Do it. Make my ego feel better. My ego needs some loving right now. You're assuming by this point that Sharon won't actually be have a celebrity profile? On oh, this? yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, mid mid like Madam Midnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A.K.A. Midnight. A.K.A. Midnight. <laughs> A.K.A. Midnight. Um, uh, finally, Joe... Yeah, I guess I can just speak the generic platitudes everyone else has done. So, great job, chat. This was weird, first time as well, but it was good fun. Yep. Pleasant, uh. pleasant to do, had a good time, and thanks for turning out. It was weird not being part of the mob and being in the channel. Yeah, so it was fun. had to be on the spot. Let's not lie, you were in that channel as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I will then close up. So, yes, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Fimba! Woo! Yeah, I love like first sessions of Apocalypse World because literally going into that, the things I had planned, there would be a town. Roughly your roles within this town, 
that those two would be going on a drive and you two would be going to dinner. That's the end of my prep. I had no idea what was going to be talked about. I had an idea for a guy called Sheriff. Didn't really know what he was going to be about. Other than probably a lawman because that's funny shit. Uh, I was like, maybe a bank vault for you guys? Or something techie? That thing with the wolf. The, with the facility. The whole bit in the bar. I just love it. I just have to like sit here and go, go! Challenge their capacities. It's going to be great. I love this game. Um, yes. If you like what I do, please do follow the stream. Uh... You'll hopefully be doing this again next week, provided we can schedule it. Uh, follow my Twitter for all the details. I will announce it as soon as we have a date. Um, Someone in chat well, the YouTube, know what the YouTube gonna be. Is, YouTube way. VODs will be on the Math and TV YouTube channel. If you go down into the panels below, there is a big YouTube arrow, or there should be, hopefully. That If you click on that, that channel will be where they will all end up eventually. Uh, I mean, as soon as the stream ends, the entire broadcast will be up on um, on my past broadcasts. But yeah, I'll get those edited before I go to bed, and I will then upload them tomorrow. Uh, also, I will be doing an extra show, which you four are not allowed to watch, very specifically. What? This show is, 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 will be an hour long, where I will plot and plan the, uh, the fronts of this game, which are basically the things I'm going to throw at these four. That show will be spoiler central. It will contain things that will happen in the next session, things that may happen, characters we may never even meet, and bullshit all around that. It'll be where I will make conspiracy theories with the chat to have some fun. And yeah, it's, it's... Also, if you want to learn how to do my job, that's where I will hopefully teach you. Yeah, I've had a really good time. Thank you all for coming down. Have a lovely evening. Bye! Uh, da, 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 I'll da. miss you. Shut up, Johnny. And, 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 uh, there's too many buttons to push!